go into the potential. Uh, because I guess I would worry that if we apply for that and get it, there's potentially less chance that we get a park grant for Dallas for next year because we just got this one. So they're going to say, oh, you just got one. You don't need another one. So there's maybe some bad side to it, but maybe it's a different pot of money. So maybe not. I don't know that it will have. I don't know. They ruled. It just depends. They wanted. They wanted to pick who they wanted to pick. And uh, this was a way to do that. Uh, all right. Uh, start off with Public Works Director Jeff Hunter. Um, Public Works Road update. Okay. Uh, acting interim county engineer, Sescarola. Go for it, guys. Okay. We have a few things on your consent agenda. Uh, concurrence to award the jail roofing contract in the amount of $435,375. That was right within our uh, right within our engineer's estimate. We only had one bid, but the one bid was good. Um uh uh, local agency agree consultant agreement. It's in a supplement to expand the time and the dollars for Trejo to finish up some projects we have. Um, another one is concurrence to award Rock Creek Bridge to uh, Panther and Industrial Painting LLC in the amount of $268,969. That's for the bridge painter on Rock Creek Bridge over Rock Creek on Old Highway 8. Uh, a notice to public contractor or notice of public hearing for the uh, franchise agreement with the Vista Gas. We've already received a public records request requesting the franchise agreement information. I mean, it doesn't matter to me. I mean, we can get it to Lee and she could post it on the website. Where's this going? Where's the location? Countywide, oh, okay. which most of franchise agreements are countywide. The only ones that typically aren't are the ones with the energy groups because they only care about getting the right. energy off there. But for uh, gas and any of the other utilities, phone and all that, they're usually countywide. And this one is countywide. Um, so we can we can do that, or we can do it however the process. Again, he wants some other stuff, so. On the on the uh, public records request, uh, then we have an approval for small works contract with Oliver Floor Covering for Annex Four, and this is for the floor covering for once we move um, juvenile out and put mental health or get it before all the people from mental health move in. So we're replacing all the carpeting and ECT. In the Carpeting bad or just carpeting's old? worn out. That's a road cost because it's a road bill. So road's paying for that cost. And, and that's it. I'll turn it over to you for construction. Morning Road, we have a pre-paved meeting scheduled for Thursday, the 1st of June, and tentatively start paving on Monday, June 5th. The annual striping project, uh, striping continues this week on the west side of the county in the Dallasport area. They're nearing completion of the first phase of that contract. On design end, we did uh, we do have the concurrence to award for Rock Creek Bridge on the consent agenda this afternoon. White plastic edge lines and slope flattening projects are currently on ad with the uh, bid opening dates on June 6th. Construction funding approval documents for curve warning signs and guideposts are still waiting washed out approval and permission to go to add. We have our proposals due this afternoon for our data collection project. Design funding approval paperwork for the Bickleton area paving project is uh, waiting approval from washed out as well. And design work on Sunday on Old Highway 8 project. The right of way documents are being prepared, stormwater designed, and we're awaiting our approval from DAP on the archaeological report that we submitted. And design and permitting processes are ongoing for other maintenance projects, which include, you know, snowplow turnaround and Bigelden Highway widening project. Okay. 
maintenance projects on the east side we're putting shoulders and culverts on east road and grading west side we're patching in the glenwood area and doing some grading um upcoming facility events we talked the other day and a decision was made so there's a sidewalk uh for lot d which is the annex one or where annex one was sitting and the ramps in lot b which is where annex three was sitting are scheduled for august the hvac contracts are being put together with the caveat we're going to see how it works in one of the um one of the rooms before we go forward health will be taken care of like we talked about on thursday um hvac and pioneer center will be this fall can't get the units until then uh jail roof replacement the award is on the agenda today superior court's the same uh dispatch basement upgrades plumbing is complete ceiling grid and and fire Ceiling grid installation, fire suppression relocation is happening this week. So then we'll have that done. It's just a matter of doing the uh, doing the concrete polishing and uh, and a few other things, and that project will be wrapped up. A uh, juvenile remodel floor covering is being put in as we speak. Um, Annex four remodeling, like for health. Um, we're meeting with Aaron after the later on this morning and to discuss the uh, floor cover or floor covering is set and just to finish up what walls are going to stay what walls are going to be removed um radio tower we got a we finally got a date june 26 is when they're going to start installing the tower uh some follow-up issues follow-ups um oregon trail rally was this weekend went well a lot of people attended um, they were happy with the way everything went, and uh, there's a little damage. They beat the heck out of a couple roads, but we put them back together. They pay for that, so that's not a cost to the taxpayers. Uh, Dallasport painting is to start at the end of May, from what I've talked to uh, some of the members from the community council. They're going to start painting the last week of May, first week of June. They're going to paint the outside of the community center. We've gotten them to paint and everything. Uh, Mary Hill, there's no fairground events this week, but there is a Mary Hill Memorial Hill Climb this Saturday and Sunday where they go up and down the uh, Mary Hill Loops Road. And do we have a couple other things? Quick attack mill site. I'm going to, we got an email from the superintendent over there. Some kid, some kid got out, went through the fence. Uh, then they had to call the sheriff to go find the kid on the site. And so I'm going to go up, talk, try to schedule me and see what he's talking about. But, you know, we can only enclose the site so well. Uh, Apparently there's a hole in the fence. Yeah, there's supposedly there's a hole in the fence. I'll take a look at it. It's, we don't need a new fence. We just no. need some wire. We'll just fix the so hole. So back together and be done. Keeping in mind, you both been on the tour. You can go right up if he runs up the side. He can go right underneath the fence we walked through, and you're in. I just and we used to have a chain link fence there. We took it down because people were cutting it and driving it because it's too secluded back there. So that's why we put that gate up there and just get away with the fence because they could get in anyway. They can walk around the fence for that purpose. I mean, we can't fence the whole property. In. Well, and if you got a runner, the runner's gonna run and find the hole in. Yes. But- Well, we'll fix the hole. Really wise, let's-, let's We'll fix the, the hole. hole back together. Yes, we'll <laughs> fix the hole. And, and then uh, just uh, waiting to see. I got some information from what they wanted. We you know, have dealt with, with uh, Rebank, our Republic on that. So I'm not really sure where we're going next with the hand side, hand sanitizer disposal. So I called uh, Jeff King this morning to make sure he got that email because I would like to see his stock inventoried so that we can get a price to get it all gone in the same lot. Um, and I think I included you in that email chain that they're willing to send somebody out here to do a on-site inspection. So told Jeff this morning that might be a good idea for him to facilitate that. Um, so I would say 
Do you want to be the contact? Do you want us? To, how do we want to? No, it, it's you. I okay. just want to make sure Jeff is in it. Okay. And that they're doing everything they can to help us. And now I'm out. Okay. So we have all the stuff that they that they wanted. These, this for is your all stuff. But yes. We don't have it for Jeff's stuff. No, I don't. That's Jeff's thing. Yeah. And the kicker is I'm, that's was this was kind of a little kick in the pants to, uh, uh, get on it and get it all out in the same shipment, hopefully. So we're not paying shipping twice. Right. Is right. my worry. Uh, if we do you, it isn't so much the disposal, it's all that freight. And if then he turns around and does it in three months, we have freight all over again. We need to do it all in one load. So, you still want the cheapest disposal, which usually is one freight. Right. Right, exactly. Because we have, like I said, we got it from Safety Clean and we got a price from um, uh, Republic. Republic, basically. Republic's office. It's US, uh, whatever they call them. Ecology or something. Yeah, US Ecology. And our price from, but at that point in time, they weren't proposing to pick it up. So that is the change. So we'll see now. If they're proposing to pick it up, then we'll see because we were at the same price with safety clean as we were with us ecology and we had to deliver it and i don't have anybody that has a hazmat or i don't have a that's, vehicle either so. that's why i got involved to see if the price would come down right it, now it, I'm involved. yes so if, it, if, it, if it's down there if that price for 350 includes the pickup then we're at the same place and i don't really care it can go to them if they're especially if they're able to handle Jeff King stuff. Right. So that's that's me. Is That's the only reason I was involved to see if we can get a uh, better deal than maybe you were getting offered. No, that and you well, you might have done that. And so that was the only reason I was involved in it. So okay, I'm not involved in it okay. anymore. Okay. Because yeah, we, we can. We'll be stockpiling or reaching out to them to come take a look um, so that we can get it all in the same shipment. Yeah, because either one is the same for for pickup, no, no, I mean, for as far as how we have to package it, we talked to both of them. We're just going to go get our 55 gallon drums with the sealable lid, and then it all just goes in there. So we we know what we need because we've talked to both sides. We've talked to US Ecology too. So we can get all the stuff. So I can answer everything they want. It's that Jeff King. Except for his information. Right. I don't right. have his stuff. Right. Exactly. So, okay. I, I got, think I got, I got clear direction there. And I don't think we have anything else, do we? I think so. I have a few. Okay. Uh, rally race. Um, the grading afterwards, you said, is covered by them. What do you just grade and then submit them a bill afterwards? Kind yes. Of thing? And they've been very good and they paid it every year. Right. I figured they would. Um, I don't know that it's for us, but apparently they uh, had a couple vehicles speeding through communities that weren't, you know, as they they race and then they go to the next spot and they race and they it, mm -hmm. in between that going to the next spot, there was some speeding through downtown Centerville. Oh, um, yeah. So there were some complaints and law enforcement was called to try to get speeders. And apparently they were blowing the stop sign down on Dallas Mountain. Um, so uh, if you could uh, at least reach out to the rally race people. We will. Um, and tell them to give a better job lecturing or I'll mm -hmm. put speed traps out for them next year. We will talk to them <laughs> that they had some reports, some reports of speed eating. They've been good partners. As I said, I'm sure it's just one or two bad yeah. eggs. And but uh, if they can figure out which are the bad eggs and not invite them again, that makes us happy and we get exactly. less complaints. No, we will definitely reach out to them and tell them we had some issues. Um, and then the last thing, and this might be before your time, I've been kind of harping on it for a few years. Ideally, I would still like landfill funds that go to public works to be credited off of that building. So I would like to come up with some purchase agreement scenario so that whatever the price is for that building, every time we're giving you half a million or a million or whatever, it's deducting that price out. And we're almost at another budget site. Yes. Because it didn't happen last budget cycle or the budget cycle before that. But now we have a new director. So we'll check and get the I'm price. still thinking 
um, that that's the way to go. Because if we're giving you money, we might as well be buying the building. Um, I mean, pros and cons to that because there, yes, would, definitely. Then we would have to. You would have fitted the forty thousand dollar carpet bit. Right. So uh, now we just raised the value of the building, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, that I don't know that we're doing that, but we have a new board, so we probably should set up. Okay. Well, we we can give you a cost and decide how we want to move forward. So. Yeah, that's what I had there. Um, That's all I have. Okay. Okay. Thank you. It's up to you. We can do it now. We can do it later. We can do it now. Okay. So um, we were working with Rob because we have a project on the list to to re not replace the door because it's the chain link door for the sheriff to replace the motor. Well, this is in the Sally Port. In the Sally Port, yes. So uh, they had an accident there and uh, dropped the door. That was one of the problems because the door would come down if you had to pay attention. So if you hit the button, the door wouldn't stop. That was part of the motor, part of the system. We were going to replace that. Well, they had an accident not too long ago and now they crushed, they basically ruined the door. So we have to replace the door. The door is expensive. The whole project's $25,000 now, not 15, which is what we have in the budget. So I talked to Rob about, you know, maybe we could claim it on insurance because I don't have any extra money to pay for that. And I can't just, uh, they also, and if I wanted to replace the door, I could wait, push the pro, I could have pushed the project off. It, because the motor still functioned. Now the motor doesn't function either. We burned up the motor on top of it. So the doors doesn't open. It's just, it's really, it takes three people to open and close the door. And that is a safety issue for the sheriff or for the jail because they pull through and that door is the chain link door. So you get airflow in the building. So, um, yeah, I was going to turn it over to the sheriff or turn it over to Rob at insurance. And uh, Rob's, you know, there might be other ideas. So I'll well, let Rob take it from there. Sounds good. You need a mic, sir? <laughs> so Jeff has, I believe, 15,000 yes. um, budgeted. So um, we need to come up with 10 under any scenario. So if we filed a claim, they said they would consider it. We have a ten thousand dollar deductible, so we'll we still have to come up with ten thousand um, dollars, and then it would count as a claim against the county. Um, not so sure. It's not easier just to find ten thousand dollars in um, somewhere, and um, and then through a supplemental process if we have to, or just find that ten thousand. You know, we want to assume the sheriff had it in his budget. That's that's quite a bit of money. Um, and we should be able to come up with it somehow and not incur a claim against, uh, especially since it was damage caused by us accidentally. Um, so it'd be kind of a double whammy to have a claim mark against us as well as coming up with the same amount of money. So to me, our choices are on this issue. Um, I know he's talking about finding 10, but the difference is to me 15 because we have a $10,000 deductible. It's $25,000 project now. So we either find more 10,000 more and pay for the whole $25,000 door out of county funds, uh, or do we file a claim and potentially only pay $10,000 out of county funds and get the insurance to cover the other 15 grand? The negative is. Too many small claims might jack up your insurance premium. So it's kind of like, you know, your window glass shatters in your car. Do you call Geico? You know, because you got a $500 deductible and the glass is $650, or do you just pay them a buck fifty and not get your insurance go up? We don't know that it will, 
cause the insurance to go up, but Scamania is leaving that insurance pool because they only have small claims and their insurance is high because they count everything the same. We're still new. So before I made an executive decision on which way to go, I wanted uh, board input because if we choose to go through the insurance, there could be ramifications um, with higher insurance costs later. And it was a third party claim against the county, you know, um, so. Um, yeah, and there's, I mean, there's some, it might be time on a small claim where you want the insurance involved because they're going to be the ones going after right. whoever has to pay. Exactly. In this regard, we don't need them for that. It's just, we might be able to save the county $15,000, but we might end up paying it back next year at premium time. I think we kind of possibility squeeze the budget there's not money left over for these kind of unknown emergencies all these years you know tight everybody's budgets i would imagine it's early enough in the year that you've budgeted 15 but i can't imagine you couldn't swing 10 out of some other account until supplemental puts it back yeah we, we could swing it out of out of it for supplemental yes but we would still need it at the end yeah Yes, we could. And we would have to come out of non discretional or reserve or something to well, make it up. Yeah, we, it takes a while to get them on order. And again, yeah. right now, the sheriff cannot use it. So, what they essentially do is they drive around and back in when so they bring in. Things. Technically, I'm 50 50 turn it in or not turn it in. Just pay the money or not turn it in. So I wanted a second opinion or a third opinion, which isn't here, um, on which way to go with that, because I could go either way. Do we have time to wait for Jen to see what she says? Or do oh, the, budget, the budget issue, I don't think, is a technical issue. The issue to me is whether we want to risk the insurance going up. Um, they Another get week 10 grand out of reserve. Make or break us. Another week of you guys decide. I mean, are we working to get the door fixed right now we'll worry about funding later we can do that we haven't done that no because again i it's don't got to be done one way or the other yes so i don't i wouldn't hold it up while we figure out okay which well way. we could start getting moving forward i just didn't want to spend money that we don't right. have i don't have that authority right unless that. you want to change your mind give I me the that. Well, about it. yes but we've got the we can't like not do it for the next five years. So no, regardless of which it. one we end up deciding who's paying for part of it, it's got to get done. So we might as well move forward with the getting it done. And then if you want to wait for Jen to figure out finance, but we're still going to have policy decision on whether we want to make a claim and risk the insurance going up or not make a claim. That's the policy that we're going to have to come up with the answer of. Well, we were early in the year for how many more months we have to go for possible insurance. We will know rate increases in July. I think. Now in July, that's 2024 rate increases. So we only got one small claim so far. So we want to be good partners in the pool um, as well. And, and but I think there's PA and I look at each one and determine the best approach for ours. And that insurance pool currently just counts claims. Um, so that's why Scamania left because all theirs are really small, but they had a big number of claims. So their insurance went up and they're we're in our summer meeting. We're going to discuss whether we want to set that criteria differently. So you don't get hammered for having too many baby claims. This is the only point so far this year that's been caused by self-induced. <laughs> Now we can get started on it, but does that affect it if we go do insurance? No, I mean, I, I would take pictures and stuff first, just in case. We well, yeah, we have all that stuff. Okay. Yeah. So it's reimbursement. Yeah. Well, okay. Especially if it's a, my thing's not on. Especially if it's a safety issue and it's going to be time ordering things. Yes. 
Okay, we'll get started on. We'll figure out how to pay for it. You just got to figure out, get it, get it started, take your pictures, and then we'll, we'll decide, get it done. We'll decide which route we're going through next okay. week. Okay, yeah. works for me. Thank um, you. Yeah, that's all I had. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, we are a smidge early, but we will move on to department update from Code Compliance Officer George and Dehouse. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Jump right into it. Code compliance is currently at 30 open cases. Six cases have been closed since my department's last update. Uh, five cases were uh, investigated and found not to violate county code. One nuisance case was closed after being brought into compliance and site inspection verified completion. What kind of nuisance case was that? It was not uh, location, but what kind? Crash. Crash. Crash accumulation. How long was it an active case? Uh, less than a month. Oh, okay. So somebody called something in on them, you notified them, they cleaned it up, it's resolved. And then I did inspection, close it. Perfect. Well done, sir. Uh, site inspection was conducted on property of 600 Sears on Woodland Road. The site inspection focused on a pile of trash uh, placed next to Liberty Road, a neighboring uh, private road. The Last inspection showed a reduction in the size of the accumulation of household garbage. On this inspection, bare ground was not visible. Most of what was left was scrap metal and miscellaneous non-perishable items that would not attract wildlife. As mentioned in the last update, the property owner is willing to continue cleanup but admits having mobility issues that impair or limit the work he can realistically accomplish. Uh, during the previous conversation, the property owner agreed to no longer add unsecured unsecured trash to the site, which appears, which he appears to be complying with. Uh, health issues and financial concerns are the main driving factor in granting the property owner time. Um, on this one, are you so you're not seeing any evidence that he might be moving the trash from this location onto a different section of his property? No. Okay. I don't have documented. Um, removal of the trash, but I have driven past this property on several occasions and I'll drive one day and he's, you know, there's a, uh, a trailer full of trash and then the next day it'll be gone. So. Um, Again, good job. Next. On May 16, 2023, a site inspection was conducted on North Lake Drive, showing the installation of fencing posts. As mentioned in the letter sent to the property owner, a, uh, a form of compliance would be to erect a privacy fence to impede traffic from seeing the junk vehicles. A letter will be sent to the property owner praising his progress, but reminding him of the need of continuous improvement to not resume the clock on the grace period. Um, I haven't seen any vehicles uh, come out of the site, so I don't think he's I don't think I don't foresee him removing any of the vehicles that are on the property. It seems like he's. Uh, yeah, this could be a problem later, but if code says all you have to do is have a fence. Yeah, Lem Lem kind of went at it uh, through the approach of like uh, it being a junkyard, and I think he brought in someone from the state, and they looked at it and they weren't worried about the environmental impact, so. I did think about going that way again, but it seemed like the first time that uh, the Lem had already looked into it and it didn't really get anywhere. Right, for me, what it kind of scares me is if 20 years down the road, you have a 20 acre parcel that's so full of Hulk vehicles that the guy just walks away. There's nothing salvageable on him anymore. He's yeah. eBayed everything off. And now you have a tax title foreclosure that costs you more money to haul away the junk vehicles that are on it than the properties actually work. So that one scares me, but if he's not violating the law. Yeah. Um, I know years ago I had seen one with vehicles and 
the state did have an issue with oils and things. Yeah. And so it did come to a cleanup on that one. But. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a difficult one. And uh, do we price... have any regulations on junkyard? Did we inspect and in oils and I mean, do we have anything in our code or they're either allowed or not allowed or we just build a fence and we don't know they exist? What comes to mind, um, it has to go through the state and then they send somebody over and they do the inspection. And then as far as from memory, all that I can recall that the county requires is a privacy fence. So they all the vehicles have to be enclosed within the privacy fence. So that if if they have more than X number of vehicles, they would be considered a junkyard, but that's through the state process. And that would be a complaint to the state if they're operating without a license. I think, yeah, uh, as long as it's run through an LLC, it's the state, yeah. as far as I'm aware. And that was, again, from this case, because Lem, Lem right, tried to run it. Through. That's the scary part of when they're an LLC, because then they can just walk away from the property and you yeah. can't go after their wealth. And scrap metal prices right now are like it's not worthwhile for a lot of people. Um, I'm hoping that gets better, but I don't. I honestly could. I don't know very much about scrapping metal. Oh, okay. Uh, I attended virtual training provided by Washington Associate of Code Compliance. Um, the training focused primarily on skip tracing, but also covered topics like officer safety contact techniques and avenues of enforcement. Since the last training dates have been scheduled uh, scheduled for September training. In the last update, I mentioned a singular uh, day training for the 13th. The update shows the conference was extended from the, 13, uh, from the 13th to the 15th. The course would focus on officer safety, junk vehicle certification, uh, communication skills, and self-management. Um, the training, this, this last training was really focused on bigger agencies. I don't, uh, you know, and the, the guest speakers were from Texas, which it sounds like Texas, uh, makes it their job a lot easier than mine. <laughs> they, um, but, uh, yeah, they, it, it was, it was, it was good training. Um, I don't some of the stuff that they were suggesting i don't think would be legal in washington state but it was good to see other people's um uh resources and things that they uh they do a lot of their departments are also they they have a lot of people in code compliance they were blown away that i was like one person to a county was, was like far-fetched to them but um yeah but it was interesting um, I was out of the office from May 1st to the 3rd due to personal reasons. Um, not sure if you guys have heard anything from, I had site inspections scheduled for these days and I didn't call, I didn't do it. I totally spaced it. Um, I did call them back and apologize, but if you guys heard about it, I'm, that was my fault. And I apologize. Um, yeah. Personal is personal, sir. The, the training later in September, is that focused under Washington law then? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's Which good. I think would be, yeah. That's more be beneficial. Yeah. yeah. You'll find out with the trainings that even some of them, you're only getting 70% yeah. affects you, but that 70 is a good 70. Yeah. So, yeah. The only time I worry is on trainings that 10% of it affects us and the other 90 doesn't. And yeah. We have people that attend those trainings. That post. Yeah. Definitely. Um, this, uh, I'll discuss it later with like housing stuff. So it'll be a three day event. So I'll have to. So yeah, check with staff. They will set you all up and tell you how to do everything. You will probably have to, once they get it out, um, get an agenda. Um, I would imagine it would have to be pre-approved by the board. Are we doing pre-approvals for everybody or they just do their own thing and turn them in afterwards? Yeah. I do know the the uh, the conference uh, kind of linked everything together, so you just pay a certain amount, and they cover housing and the training and that's oh, nice. everything. So okay. that helps. Yeah, uh, yeah. Any questions? Yeah, I would say um, 
yeah, when you get the information, um, submit it, we'll look at it, make sure it's good, sign it, and you register and you're good to go. Okay, all right, sounds um, good. And then if you have any questions about other travel or mileage or what's covered or food or what county and what rate or whatever, just ask staff questions and they'll, okay. they'll help you. Perfect, good job this time, sir. Thank you. You're growing, I see it. One day at a time. Spread your wings, young flower. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm assuming there's a Casey needs to come up, and I'm. Is that the same reason? Out. Uh -oh. You're in the hot seat. <laughs> So Lynn has received a resignation for one of her employees and we are requesting um, permission to um, post, requesting verbal permission for the building plans examiner. Steps one through three, it's going to be vacant in a couple of weeks. A mm, couple of months. Couple of months. He'll be here until middle or end of August. Is this the recent new? Yes, they're moving to Arizona. So it's- Oh no. I did, but- <laughs> <laughs> No. No, um, he'll be here till the middle or end of August. I would like a few weeks of overlap if I find a good candidate, um, just so they can, you know, be a little more comfortable before it's just them doing it. But, um, you know, he let me know ahead of time, hasn't given me the written yet, um, but they're tentatively scheduled to move between the middle and end of August. Okay. Um, so do you have a firm, date not yet so how are you going to do the couple weeks if you don't have a firm date i just know it'll be middle to end of august so a couple weeks might be two it might be four because you don't know mm -hmm. but if possible i would like to post now get it out there because it's probably going to take a while to find someone suitable um do you have a problem with no allowing extra staff to cover that two to four week transition period? No, and Lynn will get closer when he submits his yeah. letter. Yep. Yeah, yeah. No more than four. No more than four weeks. Overlap. <laughs> yeah, two to four, it wouldn't be longer. Okay, I can um, do that. And, and once I get his written, you know, timeline, then I can know more of what a start date would be for the new person if I find someone, okay. if I'm lucky enough to find someone. Okay. Yeehaw. Thank you. Really? Dropping Arizona? like flies. Yeah. <laughs> it's hot down there. You could commute. <laughs> right? It's like 105 <laughs> degrees down there. He'll be back. <laughs> Thank you. Um, um, we are way early on our morning schedule. Are. I mean, there's extra time in there because I'm sure we have uh, executive with landfill discussion. If you'd like to do it this morning, we can. Sure. That way it gives us some afternoon planning. Yes. Um, and that's kind of pressing. Let's just uh, 15 minutes sound adequate for a start. Sure. Before I do it all. Get my clock ready. All right. All righty. So with that, we are uh, going to end the morning work session for the public. We are going to go into executive session in accordance with RCW 42.30.110, print one, print I. Oh, sorry, print D. Uh, to review negotiations on the performance of public bid contracts when the public knowledge regarding such consideration would cause the likelihood of increased costs. Uh, we're going to go in for 15 minutes. Uh, we are not going to have any business after executive. We will just recess for lunch. Uh, so everybody else, we will just see you back here at one o'clock. Uh, and to staff, I don't mind if you want to literally shut the zoom off or if you want to just shut the mic and the cameras